In this video, we're going to talk about tips for moving out of state because let's face it, this is a crazy time we're living in and you're going to need all the help you can get. Welcome back everyone. I'm Karen Carr with the Georgia Coast Homes team here in Savannah, Georgia. And on this channel, we teach you everything you need to know about relocating to the Georgia area. Now, if you're moving out of state and you've never done this before, allow me to help you learn from my mistakes. I've lived in nine states in my life and I have moved probably 40 times. I just stopped counting after a while. Some have gone very smoothly and some not so much. So I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I have learned about moving out of a state to make your life a little bit easier. Let's get started. Tip number one is to have a parts box. Say that five times fast. This is probably one of the most valuable tips I've ever gotten. The parts box is the last thing to go on the moving truck and the first thing to come off. In this box, you will have screwdrivers, Allen wrenches, anything that you needed for disassembling furniture, which you will now need to reassemble the furniture. Because when you arrive at your new house, one of the first things you're gonna wanna put back together is probably your bed. So put all of the screws that were involved when you took the bed apart in a plastic bag and label it. Which bed do these go to? And have the tools needed to reassemble the bed in this box along with all of the parts. That way, as soon as you get to your new home, you take this box off, you put it right in the middle of the kitchen on the counter where it's easy to find. And when those pieces of furniture come into the house, you can start assembling them. You're not gonna get the house all put together super fast, but at least you can get the most important things, the beds to sleep on, a couple of chairs to sit on, maybe a table to eat at, the television, like, come on, we gotta have our priorities straight and start putting those things back together so that we can minimize the disruption as much as possible. Also in the parts box, toilet paper. Paper towels, maybe some Windex, some Simple Green, a couple of cleaning supplies, just to wipe out cabinets before you put things into the cabinets in the kitchen, stuff like that. Tip number two, plan your move as early as possible. Right now I'm filming this in September of 2020. You know what's been going on for the last several months and that thing which shall not be named <laughs> has wreaked havoc on all of our lives. So I have heard that if you are leaving New York, for example, you can't find a moving truck. They are all booked. You need to plan as far as in advance as you possibly can in case a lot of people are moving and you're not gonna be able to find a moving company, you're not gonna be able to find a truck. So plan as far in advance as you possibly can. Tip number three, temporary storage. You've heard about pods. I think U-Haul has their version of pods, which is where they deliver the container to your house. And my neighbor just recently moved and I got to see the way they drop this thing off and pick it up again. It was super cool, but I digress. They drop off the container you load it up with all of your stuff. They come pick up the container and they take it away and they store it on site somewhere else. We do have a pod storage facility here in Savannah. So if you're moving here and you're not quite ready to put all of your stuff into the house, maybe you don't close on your house for another two or three weeks, they will put the pod in storage until you take possession of the house and you are able to move your furniture in. Tip number four, make sure you get all of the utilities turned on before you move into the house. There is nothing worse than showing up at the house and realizing you have no running water or no electricity. So if you are moving to the area, find out whether you're buying a house or you're renting a house from the seller, the landlord, the property management company, who do you need to contact in order to get these utilities put in your name prior to your arrival? Learn that lesson the hard way. My husband just came home. He's going to make a, a glass of something to drink and it will involve the ice maker. I'm absolutely positive. <laughs> Tip number five, and this might be the most important, is vet your moving company. Oh man, did we learn this lesson the hard way. 
We were moving to another state one time and we were moving voluntarily, so it was not being paid for by the company. And we did all of our research, getting bids from multiple moving companies. One company came in at literally half the price of everyone else. So when I told the other companies that I had chosen this one, they begged me. They said, please read the reviews online. Ask them why they're so much less expensive. We couldn't possibly do the move for this price unless we were not giving you something very important. You need to find out what that is. I didn't listen because I figured they're just trying to win my business, so they're bad-mouthing the, comp the competitors. Well, here's what happened. The moving company showed up, they loaded all my stuff into the truck on a Friday. They were supposed to drive to the next location, meet us on Monday, and unload the truck at our new house. They didn't show up. I called to find out where they were. They said, oh, guess what? We didn't fill the truck completely, so we're going to wait until we get another moving job so we can fill the rest of the truck and then we will show up. And that was in the fine print, which I did not read. So we lived in that empty house for two and a half weeks with no furniture, no sheets, no towels, no plates, no cups, no bowls, nothing except what was in the suitcase because we were only supposed to be in that hotel for two nights. We didn't bring all of this stuff. We had to go to Walmart and buy paper plates and disposable cups and plastic forks and towels and air mattresses and sheets to put on the air mattresses, wasted a ton of money on stuff that we would probably never use again, all because I was trying to save a buck by going with the least expensive moving company. After I read the reviews that the general public had put online, now I thought I had read the reviews prior to hiring this company. They told me where to go look. I clicked on the link, I read the reviews, they were wonderful. When I did some research and I went to the Better Business Bureau's website, oh boy, did I get an eyeful. So if you are comparing moving companies, I know that moving is very, very expensive and you're trying to do everything that you can to save, but read the fine print and make sure that you don't lose a ton of time and you don't learn that lesson the way that I did. In order to save money on moving, you can always do your own packing. Rather than let the company pack up the boxes, you pack them yourselves. Maybe you buy the supplies, the tape, the packing peanuts, the boxes. Maybe you buy them yourself and do everything that you can to save some money on that cross country move or that out of state move. But boy, if they come in significantly lower than all of the competition, there is a reason why. And you're not gonna like the reason why, trust me. Tip number six, if you are selling a house in one state and then buying a house in the next state, how do we do that? What are the logistics of making that happen? You can have it happen on the same day. However, usually that only works if you're in town already and you're selling a house and buying a house in the same general area. If you're doing it out of state, you're gonna wanna allow a little bit of time. Perhaps you close on the sale of your house on a Tuesday and you close on the purchase of the next house on Wednesday or Thursday. I would say allow yourself a couple of days. Everything gets delayed now and then. I had a closing this week that was delayed two days at no fault of the seller, at no fault of the buyer. It was just the environment that we're in. You do not wanna be homeless plan that there might be a couple of days in between and just plan to stay in a hotel if you can or stay with family or stay on a friend's couch. If you've got animals, I know it makes it more difficult, but you're gonna have to plan ahead and figure out what to do. Because if you say I'm gonna close at 9 a.m. on Monday and then I'm gonna jump in my car and drive six hours and close on the next property, what if there is a traffic jam and you're not gonna make it, you're gonna miss your closing. So give yourself a little bit of time between the sale of house A and the purchase of house B. Just know that you're gonna to have to live in a hotel for a couple of days. Maybe your stuff goes into storage. If the moving truck is gonna take several days to deliver the stuff, more power to you. You're not paying for any storage. Just plan accordingly. The more you can plan in advance, and allow for things that may go wrong, the less stress there's going to be in the end for you. And tip number seven, I wish that I would take my own advice. 
have a yard sale before you move, not after you arrive at your new location. I don't know why we always do this. We pack up all the stuff, we take it to the next house, we get there, we decide that we really don't have room for it or it was unnecessary, and then we sell it at a yard sale. Do yourself a favor, have the yard sale in advance because now you're not paying to move the stuff that you are not going to use in your new location. And sometimes things are just so heavy, it costs less to just leave it behind and buy a new one than it does to pay to move the thing. If you've got a gun safe, if you've got a pool table, if you have a piano, these things are big and heavy and awkward to move. Sometimes it just makes sense to leave it behind and get a new one when you get there. Or you may find that it's not even necessary when you get there. Maybe you have a big formal dining room table. It's gonna cost an arm and a leg to move it because it weighs a ton. You get to your new house and you realize, you know what, I've only used it three times in the last four years. Why am I lugging this thing from house to house? So have a yard sale and get rid of any extraneous stuff before you pack up and move. So those are my seven tips for moving out of state with as little hassle as possible. If you're coming to the Savannah area, do you really know what it's like to live here? Watch this video next where I tell you seven reasons why you might actually hate living here.